Let's, let's rock. Forumfilmcast.com is back. Yeah, baby. Do a little follow-up conversation with Trace and Paul on The Hunt. Hey, hey. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We appreciate it. Contact us for feedback and questions at forumfilmcast at gmail.com. And masterpaulff at gmail.com. And? Try 700 at AOL. Okay, so uh, if you haven't seen my my little commentary on the movie, check out maybe the first three minutes. It's too long, really. But uh, I wanted to bring up a couple things with my buddies Trace and Paul. It's always more fun to chat, have a little argument, have a little conversation. Indeed. And uh, basically, I I was really moved by the, by the movie, but I think a lot of that was specific to me because I had often talk, talked about, you know, what, what do you do? What, how, how do you... How do you judge fairly? How, how should our society judge fairly a case of someone who's been accused of, of something like sexual molestation of a, a young child in which all you have in certain cases is uh, a lot, no phys- physical evidence. You only have hearsay. hearsay. Exactly. So uh, great minds. <laughs> so what do you do? And uh, that's one question. But the, the part of the answer is... Uh, Whatever is right or wrong, it doesn't matter because uh, whoever's been accused, once word gets out, there will be repercussions, negative repercussions for that person, person regardless of, uh, of, of the truth or not. Um, so I, I was totally chilled by the movie. And I, after the movie, I, I was just aching to chat with somebody about it. And I, I, did, <laughs> and I did find this, uh, this guy walking out with me, and I chatted him up. But uh, now, now I got to chat with Trace and Paul. So, what'd you think? Did you interview the guy? I did not interview oh. the guy. Oh. What'd you think? Well, this was painful. It was a painful movie to watch, and um, it it wasn't pleasant. It wasn't rose-colored anything. It was pretty blatant in your face. So you didn't like it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it. It's not my cup of tea. It's um, I don't like the message. There's Without a spoiling it, there's no happy ending. Were you moved by the movie? Did it affect you emotionally? Of yeah. So it was affected in that regard. It really upset me. I was upset maybe from 10 minutes into the movie. Okay. Beyond, I was done. I was so upset. All right, Paul. <laughs> okay. Um, um, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, yeah, it's very upsetting. It's a tough message because it's difficult to... I don't know. The, the situation is obviously difficult for the the so main were character. You, were you affected as well? I I was. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think I, I was. Heard, I heard Paul fell asleep. So yes, again, he <laughs> fell maybe asleep. Not, maybe quite not so so <laughs> stunned. <laughs> Which we will ask. Okay, you okay. About okay. That was the, that points. was in the beginning parts. Uh, okay. So you woke uh, up in the middle. No, 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 no. That was only a couple of minutes. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, now, I missed the uh, interviews with the children. Uh, it was a little energizer nap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> to power, okay, I don't want to spoil up. anything, but yeah, it was in the beginning. So. Okay, so <laughs> did you like it or not? Not like it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I, I actually I liked it a lot. The movie. No I like Mads way. Mikkelsen did like I think one of his best performances. <sighs> ever. I think he's I think he's a great actor, but yeah. but again, the the premise I find really compelling. Did you? And and the premise, yeah. I mean, it's you know, like you said, it's a small town uh, uh, situation, and maybe that's from the it's previous uh, podcast. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, it, it makes it magnifies when somebody does something. Everybody knows, and what do you do then? You know, how, how do you deal with it? Then? You, All right, so ugh. so we're gonna go to the the mini spoiler. If you've already seen my commentary, then then you know what's up. But uh, here we're gonna talk about the premise. If you want to know nothing. Then uh, stop right here. So the premise Swirling again, just briefly, uh, what do you do when uh, a preschool kindergarten child uh, starts to speak about the the genitalia of a male teacher, um, and uh, bad stuff ensues. Uh, regardless, I mean, obviously. On the one hand, if, if if this is in any way accurate, then it's a deserved repercussion. And if it's not, it's not deserved. But I think regardless, there will be some repercussion. The way this came about was very upsetting to me. Because number one, everybody loved, you know, his name was... What, what oh, name? yeah. That's, that was Are we spoiling the, it or not That yet? was the premise. So that's the premise. Any, anything else on just the basic premise that you want to get out? Yeah. Because we're going to well, give him another chance. Spoil the hell out of this one. Uh, well, I'm sorry. I, I You know, it's... 
like I, I mean, I kind of spoiled a little bit that you know it's what somebody happens to somebody in a small town, and uh, basically uh, everyone's lives. Yeah, it, it yeah. Pass, <coughs> all negative comments send send his way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So that's the premise. Stop here if you want. Don't want the spoilers. It's it's full on spoiler time. You've been warned. Okay. Great. So uh, uh, I had a couple. I had a couple things I wanted to bring up. And one was was brought up uh, by um, this podcast I heard, these Aussie guys. Check them out. Uh, on the previous video, I gave the specific website. I'll try to post the link. So he brings up the fact that the first time he watched the movie, he assumed innocence for the Mads Mikkelsen character. I did too. Um, although, because I arrived late, I was judging his innocence by the reaction of the crowd. So when, uh, when I saw the, his fellow teacher overreacting and starting to extrapolate wildly from the little uh, knowledge he had of the, of the supposed incident, I could hear the horror in the crowd and it kind of gave away that, uh, that, that they thought he was innocent. And so I assumed the beginning, whatever I had missed, uh, favored his innocence and did not reveal anything. So obviously, they must not have shown uh, him sexually molesting well, this girl. You, Otherwise, I the crowd would, this, would not react that way. I could tell you this: they didn't show anything. The guy, you didn't miss anything. The guy's clear. It's it's crystal clear he's innocent. Okay. And, so and well, it shows. So, but, so but it also so shows that he had a relate. You know, he's close to the family. He did, you know, hold his her best hand. Friends, his best friend's daughter. Yeah, Clara was his, uh, their another daughter. Another Clara, another Clara. Another Clara, right? The and third she, Clara. the best friend, he did like, you know, t you know, take her hand and take her to work, you know, I mean, the kindergarten and et cetera. But yeah, th there's nothing, you know, inappropriate at all. So there's nothing compromising at all. Right. Well, but again, this is this is a movie. This is edited, and uh, we we like to assume that the movie's showing us everything, but. Uh, once in a while, a movie comes along, and they, uh, you know, for all you know, it, it would have been uh, the filmmaker could have at the end made flashback revelations about scenes that were not shown in the beginning, revealing that in fact he was guilty. It's, this is not the case. It's not. It's, it's not, not unprecedented. The case it, it could have been like that. Sure, it's happened in but other it's movies. Not it, the case it, it, in this movie, in this movie, they did cut out on all the parts where there there could have been like a situation. There's like you know this intimate touching or anything. I mean, there's no. There's really no room for error here. I mean, to me, it's crystal clear. Uh, I disagree. Uh, no, no, I, I no, no. They could have strongly favors innocence, but I don't think it's. I don't think that. But well, they, the 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 stories from the clear. children mentioned that you know he would take them to a room and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, they could have shown that at the end, saying that you know, yeah. having them like all, you know. All I'm saying is you could add three or four minutes to this movie and you could make it a completely different movie. Sure. Yes, yes, but no. And no. That, I, that's that's the intriguing thing about but it. That's not is, what happened. Is this whole movie that I was watching. Uh, is is tense and it could in it and all of it has no connection to the reality right so scenario a guilt the 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 movie would be the same because the the horrible thing is the rest of this community has nothing to go on the only thing they have to go on is the hearsay and that's the same in innocence or guilt of course, there's some cases where there's physical evidence. That was not the case. At least that was not brought up as being the case no, in this. Not, case. A, not at all. Okay, everything was, it was all hearsay. It was everything all... was circumstantial and hearsay. But then when they, because they went to a preliminary trial, I mean, all the kids, first it started with a little girl, and then all the little kids started saying the same story. And then they said something about being taken to the basement. So they searched right, but that's, the house. That, that's a, that still doesn't change anything, right? There was no basement. What are you talking no, about? No, no, but that, that, the beautiful thing about that is let's assume guilt. It didn't happen. Okay, my turn. <laughs> Let's assume guilt. Let's assume a case of guilt. Now you have a guilt with one child involved. Let's assume the... I don't remember her name. What was her name? Clara. 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 So let's, let's assume that she was sexually molested, a horrible thing, and, uh, and then it, this rumor gets spread to the other children, and mm -hmm. they make up this whole basement story. Right. That would have been beautiful for, for, uh, for the Mads Mikkelsen character because... Now you're combining truth and lie, and you're writing off the truth with the lie. But the, the fact that the, the kids got it wrong does not, does not in any way rule out that, he, that, uh, that he something, went, something went down, right? Because ki kids are unreliable regardless, right? Kids are unreliable 
in a case of innocence or guilt because the assuming that there was there was never any proof so how no 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 right come on no there's never that's that's the whole point there's never any proof and it could be so you have it could be completely either way innocence or guilt no proof in either case that's, well, that's I, the intriguing thing. Well, about I think that, but but one thing you're 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 talking about that children are unreliable and, and maybe and you know yeah I, mm. whatever that you know maybe that's true maybe it's not. I'm just saying that in the movie it was assumed that they were telling it's, the truth. It's it's the totally, whole time. All the adults, like they were speaking all the adults like adults believe everything was yeah, possible. Yeah 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 yeah. The, the, not not no, they weren't questioning them at all. No. And then when the girl was trying to recant, they were like, no, 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 you just forgot it. They and were trying to the, reprogram her. Right. They were telling her, no, no, you told the truth before. Yeah. So it was, you just don't that, want to that, that, those kind of things made it really scary. Like That was creepy. Like and, They, they and didn't I, want to hear the girl try to recant. They wanted the witch hunt. Yeah. yeah. I feel like they were kind of on the witch hunt side of things. Uh, but I do think that's not completely outside the bounds, bounds of what's happened in history. Uh, they they definitely were not going middle of the road where they're saying okay let's let's be cautious here let's be careful in our judgment let's try to weigh all, all that we do know and all that we don't know they definitely the his fellow teacher especially once she had an inkling that uh, something might be going down just started to as assume things and, and yeah it like a them. domino effect you know what you know? we know what really upset me about that scene was how they questioned Clara without calling her parents first. That's interesting too. Okay, that would I don't, never I don't know fly. The... That would never fly in America. Well, a lot of this, a lot of this wouldn't fly in America. Yeah. So, so that was another thing. Um, the Aussie guy brought up that a lot of the reaction of Mads Mikkelsen character, he just didn't buy it. He didn't buy it as realistic. So, what he means by that, I think, um, why? For one thing. From my perspective, America is completely different. So the first thing Mads Mikkelsen is going to do is get a lawyer, <laughs> right? Well, yes. <laughs> it, and, the, and deny I, it. He I, didn't even deny it. When no, it, no. It I, I, he he didn't, just sat there. He, like he, a, he, I understand what you're saying. He, he, he kept on – he never denied that he did it. He just he, said – I think there was one. I think it was one scene he de he denied it, and, and that was it. The rest of the time, it's like, well, what do you think? No, and the he kept on, accusation, he said, all he said was the F – you know, that's it. Right, he didn't say he anything. He didn't say no. I would be like, are you? No, that's yeah. crazy. So that that's was part the, of it. And other, other things that were a little, they're totally like on the on the side of let's make cinema here are the grocery store thing. Mm -hmm. oh where he's God. like, let me fight for my pride. I mean, yeah. in America, it'd be like, he'd just go home, call his lawyer. Okay, yeah. so so let me, let me describe the scene. Right. Yeah. The scene is, um, there's a pre-scene where the Mads Mikkelsen's son is doing some shopping at the grocery store. And the people there tell him, Please uh, let your father know he's no longer uh, able to shop here, and neither neither are you. Neither are you. Right. So, but he let him do the one last uh, shop shopping trip there, and then a scene down the line comes where Mads Mikkelsen's there. But it was he's, after he was proven he, he was, was already exonerated. He was innocent. Yeah, he, he was, was exonerated. exonerated, and he goes shopping for the first time. So, so he goes right. he goes to I think it's the butcher. Yes. And he it's he, the same store though. Right. So and he asks for a certain thing, and the guy says, "Oh, we don't have any I of that." And then uh, I don't know exactly what I'm. Mean, basically, basically, the guy comes out and, and whacks him. Right? Yeah, he, right. Yeah. He knocks. And him out. Uh, assault. And then right. the Mads Mikkelsen character kind of his his attitude is I'm going to have my groceries. I have the right to my groceries. I will stand up for my right to have I my have groceries. The right to shop there. You do have to remember this is a small town, so everybody knows everybody, but. Uh, it's totally not an American thing to do no. in general. That well, would never happen here. Especially uh -huh. the, let's let's just say the Mads Mikkelsen character is not particularly erratic, right? No. I mean, I, this is this is not a character who like has a way of life of picking fights. He's not that kind of guy, no. at least according to the movie. He's a very calm. Seems so, like everybody likes him. Before. So that kind of guy in the U.S. would be like, "He whacked me. I'm gonna go take pictures of this. I'm gonna talk to my lawyer. Then, right. I'll see you in court." But uh, but for cinema, they, they make some more whacking and some fight, and he, he defends his honor, and then he actually checks out with a big bloody face. You no, know, he comes back, and he beats up the... They throw him out. But in the end, he, he, uh, he does a headbutt to the guy's throat, I think, and he Ooh, knocks he out the I mean, butcher. makes for good cinema, but oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe we need to look at partially uh, cultural thing, you know? Yeah, so I don't know how... I don't know. Is it, this was set in Denmark, right? D fly. Denmark? Talk to us, Denmark. We're waiting. Never fly well, in I, I do have a... I possibly know a connection to a Danish woman, so... Maybe All right, we'll, we'll get a little, maybe we'll we'll a little commentary. Her, maybe she'll... 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a. Uh, okay. A uh, <laughs> and then and then uh, a minor. Uh, Trey seemed to be very interested in the ending. Mm. Uh, the ending uh, kind of shows us that everything's okay. Over time, he's accepted back into the, this One small small village society. Yeah. His his son is. He, he gets a, a gun that's been passed on from at least his grandfather, um, if not further up in generations, mm-hmm. and they're they're going on a hunt, and uh, dad's kind of coaxing, giving him tips on hunting, and uh, son and father are separated, and then wham, somebody shoots, and there's a near miss, uh, somebody's nearly missed Mads Mikkelsen, and we see we see the shooter. But it's kind of blurry, or you can't identify who it yeah, is. Yeah, because he was using the sun. So oh, was it a the silhouette? Light, silhouette? Yeah, there was only a silhouette. It was sunrise. It was sunrise. And uh, the way they shot it and edited it, it they kind of um, cut, cut, and and it made it look like maybe this was um, dreamy. I don't know. Uh, oh, you thought that? No. So, I, but I, so I think the point of that. My, this is my take, and then we'll get yours. My take was. This is a this is a metaphor. I didn't think that there was a very literal importance to somebody shooting at him. What I thought was this movie is called The Hunt. Uh, this is kind of a, an allegory that this is kind of a witch hunt, um, right. yeah. and he's the hunty. He's the hunted. Right. And uh, after this great deal of tension, he's managed to come back to some a more peaceful place, and um, it. There's that that last couple of scenes is very contrasty. There's a big change in the tension. It's it's pretty quickly re- resolved and things are way more peaceful. And I think this last scene serves to, serves to say, "Ha ha! You think uh, you know you're free of this, but you're never really free. You're still the hunted." That was my take. What what was your take, Trace? Um, it was a little bit more poetic than yours. All right. Along the same lines, um, to me, it, it, yes, it was very metaphorical, and th- there was an allegory because of the hunt. You know, the name of the name of, of the movie is called The Hunt, and it does come full circle that he, they're hunting. And then now, this one poignant scene when he goes and he's stalking the stag, right? Mm-hmm. He, he usually would just shoot it in an instant because previously you see when the movie starts, he's a huntsman and he nails it. This one, he decides to let it go. He decides to watch it. He gets like this feeling like okay. I, he like identifies with the beast because he's been hunted already. So to me, it's very poetic. It in point, it's like for me the most poignant moment of the movie. But you know what? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it seemed like that it was about to set up that he was gonna get hunted. That mm-hmm. moment, you know, that the ironic moment was like building up. Of seemed course, like. yes, yeah. absolutely, I I concur. And then the way that they put the lighting to happen, the, you know, that crimson red. Yeah. You know, as the sun was coming up and the stag, and he let the stag go, and the instant that the stag went away, and then he got shot at. Yeah. So I don't know. So I'm not even sure. But so do you think this was literally true? Yes. Do you think it was literally true in this within the confines of the story? Yes. That, yes. that somebody did it was, shoot him. Yes. It was uh, it was a warning that that You're not safe. Yeah. yeah. Or that yeah we don't believe you. You or, are not free of suspicion. Yeah. It, it's, Watch your back. And you know I we. we 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 discussed this before a little bit, but it's kind of like having the the scarlet letter that you yeah. know you never lose mm-hmm. that you stigma. never you'll never lose that stigma from some people. Maybe some people will accept you, but not, not everybody. The suspicion once planted, the damage is done and it is there. It is reminiscent of another earlier scene in the movie where he's still not been uh, his pre pre trial or whatever I believe. Or maybe, maybe you, do, you tell me if it's not. It's the scene yeah. where he's in the kitchen with his son and a rock flies through the window. It's that's after. That's after, 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 after. after. Okay, so it's early, early after when the, the everybody's still kind of against him, but oh, officially dog. he's he's cool, <laughs> and uh, a rock flies through the that's through right. the window of his kitchen, and um, they're they're pretty scared because that that's uh, not a good whack on the head kind of thing. But it, it misses them, and they eventually go outside. And uh, they, they find Fanny. that uh, his Maddie, dog the dog, yeah. Fanny, the dog has, is has Fanny, killed. the dog. Sorry, I got Fanny. it wrong. <laughs> they killed the dog. They so yeah. maybe he's the same guy. I don't know. I, you don't know. 
Which is right, getting and who knows, right, so I think the whole town was against him, so there was only a, just one or two people who supported him. All right, so I, I, I'm just curious, so you didn't like it, but can, can you guys remember any other thriller, chiller style movie in recent years that gave you a similar level of uh, tension? Because <laughs> I, cause I, I, haven't, I hadn't been affected in this way in the last few years. Since what, Fatal Attraction? I can't. I don't. That was a long time ago. <laughs> but all right. But give us f- give us feedback because uh, I'm re- I'm ready for uh, another chiller. You know. Yeah. I mean, f- of course. Yeah. I mean, Fatal Attraction is is top of the list. But well, but to me one. to right. me that but goes good in movies. Yeah. Uh, that that goes in with one of my favorite types of uh, chillers, which is a situation where uh, you know the truth, or at least you think you know the truth. And, but everyone around you, or at least several people around you, are telling you that you're wrong, and then you then you start believing that you're crazy, and that that's always been kind of a, a spooky thing to me, because because um, that could happen. It's not like a monster. It's lo- it's not magical. It's not saw. Um, no. Well, this brings to mind like the movie, for for instance, The Fugitive. Right. One one I'm thinking of along with lines that I was thinking of. The game, right? Oh, so the, yes. there's a punchline at the movie where he jumps off the side yeah. the and they catch him, right? Because yeah. he's Sean Penn, That's Michael Douglas. End. I love that movie. Anyway, I was thinking also the Truman Show, honestly, because he 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 show. kept on oh, insisting yeah. that there's something more going on, but there was like an active conspiracy to tell him, no, 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 this is reality, you know. There was a collective consciousness plotting against him. Right, and he. I remember liking that, but it's man, it's been a long time. It, but that's in the nineties, <laughs> so it's been a while. Not as long as Fatal Attraction, but, <laughs> but yeah. All right, so overall, Trace, uh, thumbs I, down. Thumbs down. Don't recommend it. I give a thumbs up if if you if you like killer I, thrillers. If if you, yeah, I if think you, if, well, you, if, you, if, if you it's like not your style, then then don't do it. But it's based on a realistic premise, so to me, I found it very. And tricky. if you like, I mean, of course, you know, I, I hate this. Yeah, I did. I did fall asleep a little bit so, <laughs> so it's not fast paced but um, but it's a good movie I, I thought it was uh, I th- you know people I mean that person that said it's unrealistic maybe the writing was a little unrealistic you know the, the dialogue before you know for Mads Mikkelsen but I thought his acting was superb he's, so. a, oh, is that he's one of my favorite and, uh, actors and the movie's good the premise was strong and uh, at the end I think it's a realistic portrayal that something that could happen in a small town area you know alright guys okay Thanks a lot. See you soon.